Hey everyone, Happy Go Time here. In this video, I'm going to be starting a new series, which I call the Filthy Casuals Guide to Gearing Up in TBC. Now I have a question for you. Do you hate grinding? No, 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 not that grinding. Do you hate doing dungeons over and over again? Do you hate killing mobs over and over again? If the answer is yes, then this guide is for you. You see, I've taken it upon myself to look at every single quest reward in the game to determine the best list of gear for your class. Every single item on this list requires no rep grinding, no grinding the same dungeon over and over again. However, you may need to get into a group or two to accomplish some group quests. But hey, this is an MMORPG. You should be playing with other people. That's a part of the whole experience after all. Now in this video, I'm going to be covering the caster DPS classes first, and then in the subsequent videos, I'll be covering the physical DPS, the healers, and then the tanks. The way I'm going to structure this is I'm going to basically go into each zone one by one in chronological order, telling you the quests you should look out for, as well as the quest items you should get from those quests. And with all that out of the way, let's get started. Alright, so starting with the first zone, Hellfire Peninsula, there's two quests of note. The first one's called Cruel's Intentions if you're the Horde, or Overlord if you're the Alliance. It has a really nice trinket reward called Vengeance of the Illidari, which has 26 passive spell critical strike, as well as an on-use 120 spell power increase, which lasts for 15 seconds and is on a one and a half minute cooldown. Really great trinket to start off, especially if you're a fresh 60. As for the second quest in the zone of note, we have the quest called Colossal Menace. It's the one where you have to kill those big old shard beings in the northwestern part of the zone. The quest rewards are basically range slot items for various classes and specs, and it happens to be the only quest for which provides a reward for Elemental Shaman, and it's called Totem of Lightning. It's actually kind of lame because it only reduces the mana cost of Lightning Bolt by 15, but again, it's the only quest reward you can get for that particular slot for Elemental Shaman, so it's kind of the case of it's better than nothing. Anyway, that's it for Hellfire Peninsula. Let's go on to Zanger Marsh, my favorite zone by the way. In this zone, there's two quests of note as well. The first one's called Overlord Gorefist or a Spirit Ally, depending on if you're the Alliance or the Horde. It also has a quest reward that has different names depending on if you're the Alliance or the Horde. It's either going to be called Glowing Crystal Insignia or Ancient Crystal Talisman. Has exact same effects. It has 26 passive spell power as well as an on-use 104 spell power on a two minute cooldown that lasts 20 seconds. Two trinkets right near the beginning. Well played, Blizzard. As for the second quest in the zone, we have Stealing Back the Mushrooms, which rewards a green cloth shoulder piece called Zenger Epaulets. It's got 17 spell hit rating as well as 20 spell power. Now, you might be scratching your head a little bit about this one, but the reality of the situation is that spell hit is very scarce on quest gear, and in fact, this is one of the few pieces that have it on quest gear. And one of the objectives of this guide is to get you to your spell hit cap as a caster, which in fact you will, if, as long as you follow this guide. Unfortunately, in order to get to do that, you're going to have to wear some greens. So the general idea is you'll collect these greens, you'll have them in your bags, you'll, you'll even wear them at some point, but you'll you'll soon get rid of them once you're able to get spell hit from other sources, once you finally go into the actual heroics and, and raids and such. Anyway, that's it for Zanger Marsh. Let's head on into Terracar Forest now. In this zone, there's also two quests of note. The first one's called Torgos with an exclamation point, which provides a trinket called Terracar Tablet of Vim. It provides 22 spell hit rating as well as 84 spell power on use for 15 seconds on a one and a half minute cooldown. Now the on use ability of this trinket is pretty lackluster compared to the other ones. However, specifically for mages and balanced druids, they have the hardest time getting to their spell hit cap and so they'll need items like this in order to get there uh, because they only have about 3 and 4% respectively through their talents compared to like the Shadow Priests and the Affliction Warlocks 10% that they get. So. As for the second quest of note in the zone, we have the quest called Skywing, which provides the reward Sky Witch Hat, which is a cloth head piece with 20 spell hit rating as well as 25 spell power. Kind of a mediocre reward, but hey, you also get the pet called Mini Wing, which basically makes it the best quest in the entire game, so don't miss this one. Alright, moving away from Terracar Forest, let's head into Nagran. In Nagran, we have two quests of note. Well, three actually, if you're the Horde, and I'll explain that in a minute. But the first quest of note is going to be Gavakshi, or Gavakshi, however you say it, uh, which provides the reward Ethereal Sash, which has 18 spell hit rating as well as 15 spell power. Next up, we have the quest, the Ultimate Bloodsport. It's that one quest at the end of the Hemet Nezingwari chain where you have to kill that poor elephant Tuskor. It's going to be totally worth it though, because you get a pretty good wand out of it called the Nezingwari Safari Stick. It's got 12 spell crit as well as 14 spell power. Pretty good for mages and destruction warlocks. It's okay for Affliction Locks and Shadow Priests, but there's definitely going to be a better one down the road, so stay tuned for that. As for that Horde-only quest I was talking about, it's called Hero of the Maghar. 
It's at the very end of a really long quest chain that begins in Hellfire Peninsula. It's the one where you bring Thrall all the way back to, to Nagrand and he talks to the grandmother. And at the end of it, you get this item called Maghari Ritualist Horns. It's a cloth headpiece that has 12 spell hit rating as well as 15 spell crit and 50 spell power. So it's actually a really good headpiece, but only the Horde get it, which is kind of annoying if you're, if you're the Alliance. So, All right, moving out of that Horde love fest zone, let's head into Blade's Edge Mountains. Here we have one quest of note called the Houndmaster, which rewards a neck piece called Natasha's Arcane Filament. It's just It just has 29 spell power, so it's pretty good for Affliction Locks and Shadow Priests. It's okay for Mages, Elemental Shaman, and Balanced Druids. However, there's going to be an even better neck piece down the line, which has a bunch of spell crit on it, so stay tuned for that. All right, that's it for Blades Edge Mountains. Let's head into Shadow Moon Valley now. Now here's where the gear starts actually getting pretty good. Uh, there's actually six quests of note in this zone, the first one being Dissension Among the Ranks. It provides the reward Evoker's Mark of the Redemption, which is a caster ring that has 10 spell crit as well as 29 spell power. Pretty darn good. After that, we have the quest Akama's Promise, which provides a cloth waist called Akama Sash, which has just basically 40 spell power. So this is definitely going to be good for Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests, but it's also going to be good for the other casters. However, they're still going to be working with that Ethereal Sash from before until they can get enough spell hit. Next up, we have the quest The Cypher of Damnation, the third fragment recovered. It provides the shoulder cloth piece, Spalders of the Torn Heart, which has 18 spell crit as well as 40 spell power. Definitely a great piece for pretty much all the classes. However, for all the mages, balanced druids, and elemental shamans, they're going to have to wait until they get some more spell hit from other sources before they replace their Zanger epaulets from before. That is, of course, if they want to be spell hit capped. After that, we have the quest Terran Gorfine, Lore and Legend. It provides a leather headpiece reward called Druidic Helmet of Second Sight. This one, if you put all spell power gems into it, will have 24 spell crit rating and then 62 spell power, making it the preferred helmet for Balanced Druids and Elemental Shaman. Alright, these next couple of quests are going to be very specific to a certain classes. The first one's called Muse of Victory, which provides the reward Idol of the Avenger, which goes in their range slot. It increases the damage of their wrath by 25. All right, as for the last quest of note in Shadowman Valley, we have Veritas Must Be Stopped. It provides a spell power sword called Sumner's Blade, which has 11 spell crit as well as 103 spell power. Really good weapon, but of course it can only be wielded by warlocks and mages, so sorry druids, shaman, and priests, you're out of luck there. All right, if you thought Shadowman Valley had a lot of quests, wait till you see Netherstorm. This one's got nine different quests of note, so buckle your seatbelts. The first quest of note is called Shutting Down Mana Forge Aura. It provides another spell ring called Mana Storm Ban, which provides 10 spell crit as well as 29 spell power. Pretty much the exact same stats as the Evoker's Mark of Redemption, so another really good ring. Next up, we have the quest Hitting the Motherlode, which provides a cloak reward called Cloak of Woven Energy. This has 6 spell crit as well as 29 spell power. After that, we have the quest The Horrors of Pollution. It has a trinket reward called Star Killer's Bobble, which has 26 spell hit as well as an on use 125 spell power for 15 seconds on a one and a half minute cooldown. This is actually a pretty good trinket for being a green. Next up, we have the quest Nexus King Salhadar. Salhadar? It provides the reward Amir's Impulse Taser, which is a staff that has uh, 17 spell hit, 27 spell crit, and 103 spell power. This is basically going to be the go-to weapon for most casters until they get spell hit capped. Uh, as I mentioned before about the mages and warlocks, they, they can get summoner's blade, but if you use that, you're not going to be spell hit capped if you're using just my guide here. You're going to have to get spell hit from other sources. After that, we have the quest It's a Fell Reaver, but with heart. It provides the reward Heap Leggings, which are cloth leggings that have 15 spell hit as well as 28 spell power. After that, we have Arcanist the Insatiable, which also has some leggings, called Nether Fairy Leggings, which have 21 spell crit and 30 spell power. Obviously, the difference between this is the spell hit. Uh, you're going to want to go with the Nether Fairy Leggings if you already have the spell hit. Or, uh, however, if you need the spell hit, you'll go with the Heap Leggings. Mommy, are we done with Nether Storm yet? The next quest of note is called Turning Point, which provides the Wand of the Seer reward. This is a wand with 18 spell power, and this is the wand I was telling you about before that would be better for Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests because it's just spell power, as opposed to the Nezingwari Safari Stick, which has crit and spell power. After that, we have the quest Securing the Celestial Ridge, which provides the reward Shimmering Azure Boots, which have 16 spell hit, as well as 23 spell power. Finally, after that, we have the quest Dealing with the Overmaster. 
In this quest, we have the reward Landing Boots, which has 16 spell crit rating and 35 spell power, making it a preferred choice for elemental shamans. Okay, that's it for another storm. Man, that was a lot of quests. I'm really glad we got through that one. And that actually marks the end of the normal questing zones. What's left are a number of dungeons which have some pretty sweet quest rewards in them that you're going to want to do the dungeon at least one time for. First, let's start with the dungeons that are located in Terracar Forest, and that's Aconite Crypts, Sethic Halls, and Shadow Labyrinth. Starting with the first dungeon, we have the quest Everything Will Be Alright, which has the quest reward Aconite Anchorite's Robes, which have 23 spell hit rating, and then the rest of the stats is going to be dependent on what kind of gems you put in there. If you're an Affliction Warlock or a Shadow Priest, you're just going to want to put all spell power gems in there, and so if you put all of the blue spell power gems, it's going to have 55 spell power. However, if you're a Mage, Balanced Druid, or Elemental Shaman, you're probably going to want to put the spell power slash spell crit gems in there, in which case it'll have 12 spell crit and 47 spell power. For the second dungeon, Sethic Calls, there's two quests of note here. The first one being Brother Against Brother, which awards the neck piece Torque of the Sethic Prophet, and this has 21 spell crit and 19 spell power. This, in my opinion, is better than the previous necklace from before, Natasha's Arcane Filament, which has 29 spell power, at least if you're a Bounce Druid Mage or an Elemental Shaman, because you're really going to want to have that crit. For the second quest in Sethic Halls, we have Terok's Legacy, which has a pretty good offhand called the Saga of Terok. It's just a straight up 28 spell power offhand if you have a, a one-handed weapon to go with that. Certainly if you're a mage, you can go with the Summoner's Blade and this, as long as you have the spell hit, of course. I know, I know I'm like a broken record with this at this point. Moving on to the third dungeon, Shadow Labyrinth, there's two additional quests of note. There's the Soul Devices, which provide a Cloth Bracer reward called Shatrath Wraps which uh, if you put spell power gems into it will have 30 spell power. This is definitely going to be really good for all caster types. As for the second quest into the heart of the labyrinth, we have the quest reward Shatrath Jumpers, which are cloth boots, which if you put all spell power gems into it will have 47 spell power. These are definitely going to be great for Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests. These are definitely good for Mages, Balanced Druids, and Elemental Shaman too. However, if they still need the spell hit, they'll probably want to go with the Shimmering Azure Boots first. All right, that's it for the Terracar Forest Dungeons. Let's move on to the next dungeon, which is going to be the Caverns of Time, Old Hillsbrad Foothills, which has the quest Return to Andormu, which has the quest reward Tempest Touch, which are cloth gloves, which when you put all spell power gems into them, will have 45 spell power. Man, that's a lot of witches. Kind of makes me hungry, actually. These are actually really good for all caster types. There really isn't any other gloves that come close when it comes to quest rewards, that is. So definitely hold on to these. Alright, we're at the last dungeon, and that's the Steam Vault, with the one quest of note called the Warlord's Hideout. This rewards the cloth headpiece Hydromancer's Head Wrap, and if you put a 14 spell power meta gem in there, as well as the Glowing Night Sight, it'll actually have 57 spell power on it. This piece is especially good for Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests. Of course, the Mages, Balanced Druids, and Elemental Shaman will, will like it too, but they will need a little bit more spell hit as I keep harping on about. Alright, and with that, we've made it to the end to the Filthy Casuals Guide to Gearing and TBC Caster Edition. Anyway, I really hope this video was useful for you, and if you have any comments, questions, or criticisms, please do leave so in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. I'm planning on making more videos just like this, with the physical DPS video coming up next most likely. Until then, see you next time.